recording. I started recording. Yeah. Go. I'm, I'm telling Lara right now that uh, you are waiting to enter. Okay. Uh, see you. Bye. It was Emmanuel Ray that he's still Hello, waiting. Hello, everyone. QTM welcomes you back to our digital platform and the global tourism industry source of the latest news. These days, the QTM team has been working hard in promoting different touristic activities and develop the event to deliver the best experience in 2021. As we continuously support the recovery of the tourism industry, we bring you the fifth edition of the QTM webinar entitled Mexico, a place of history, routes, and gastronomy. Today, we are taking you on an exciting trip to Mexico. Let us all have a taste of the country's cultural heritage, beauty, history, and tremendous natural beauty. To help us explore more of the country's tourism that we get to experience its wonders, we are very honored to be joined by a set of Mexico's experts and most influential authorities in the field of tourism. To all our participants, kindly note that you are muted. However, you may type your questions in the chat box or Q&A box, which will be addressed by our speakers at the end of all the topics. And now let us start with our first speaker, Her Excellency Graciela Gomez Garcia, Ambassador of Mexico to the State of Qatar, as of September 1st, 2019. Ambassador Gomez Garcia is a career diplomat with 27 years of experience in the Mexican Foreign Service. Before arriving in Doha, she served as Deputy Consul General of Mexico in Boston for six years. Her professional portfolio encompasses various positions at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Mexico City, as well as diplomatic postings in the United Kingdom and in Switzerland. It's a pleasure hosting you today, Your Excellency. Our second speaker is Mr. Umberto Hernandez, under Secretary, uh, Umberto Hernandez Haddad, under Secretary of Quality and Regulation, Ministry of Tourism of the Government of Mexico. Mr. Hernandez Haddad was a Consul General of Mexico in San Antonio, Texas, and was a President of the South Central Texas Accredited Consular Association, USA. He has been an advisor on tourism matters to former Ministry of Tourism, Mr. Miguel Torroco Marquez, since 2007 at the National Tourism Confederation. He is the Under Secretary of Quality and Regulation at the Ministry of Tourism from December 1, 2018 to date, and the General Coordinator of the Tourism Diplomacy Council as of August 28, 2019. We are honored to have you, Mr. Hernandez Haddad. Our third speaker is Mr. Luis Araiza, former president of the Association of Tourism Secretaries and Ministry of Tourism of Baja California Sur. With extensive experience in the public and the private sectors, Luis Araiza has also vast experience in business and franchise development, as well as in productive project management. In the public sector, he has worked for more than 25 years in different management positions, and he is currently Secretary of Tourism, Economy, and Sustainability. We are delighted to have you today, Mr. Araiza. Our fourth speaker is Mr. Francisco Fernandez Alonso, currently the National President of the Nat National Chamber of the Restaurant and Food Industry, Canirac. Due to family tradition, he has dedicated most of his life to the restaurant industry. He has been General Director of Grupo La Mansion, General Director of Cofran, President of the Pine and Casual Dining Division, General Director of Iman, a real estate project developer. Moreover, he has been linked to guild activities in the Mexican Restaurant Association, Directors of Restaurant Chains, and the National Tourism Business Council. Thank you for joining us. And our fifth speaker is Mr. Alfonso Zegbe, the head of the Unit of Strategy and Public Diplomacy, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico, and Foreign Minister Representative for the Tourism Diplomacy. Appointed in November 2019 as Executive Director of Strategy and Public Diplomacy at the Mexican Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 
Alfonso Zegbe was the ambassador of Mexico to Iran from 2017 to 2019, and at the same time, ambassador to Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Pakistan. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Zik. Now, before we begin our session, session, it would be good to get an idea of our attendees' views as far as traveling to Mexico is involved. So our simple poll question is, how excited are you right now about traveling to Mexico? Very excited, somewhat excited, not excited at all, and unsure. We'll wait like around one minute for our attendees' uh, answers. And as expected, our audience answered a big yes. And now let us start with Her Excellency Graciela Gomez to explore the role of the embassy in promoting tourism between Mexico and Qatar. The floor is yours, Your Excellency. Clara, uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, Mexico. Uh, good evening, Qatar. Uh, I am really, really honored to be with you tonight. I'm particularly excited about having over uh, 160 people joining us as our guests for this uh, wonderful uh, webinar. And uh, even more so now with this 84% of uh, very excited people know, uh, wanting to learn more about Mexico. Yes. Um, I particularly want to thank uh, Qatar Travel Mart and uh, the National Tourism Council of Qatar for this opportunity to showcase with some of uh, my friends, my colleagues here, who are uh, Mexico's most distinguished experts in uh, the field of tourism, what our country has to offer in terms of uh, history, cuisine, routes, and uh, destinations to the discerning travelers from Qatar and beyond. Mexico is a tourist powerhouse, systematically ranked amongst the top 10 tourist destinations worldwide. And actually only last year, um, Mexico hold the seventh position in terms of um, visitors, uh, welcoming visitors. Uh, we are determined to maintain our place in the years to come. And in this sense, uh, doing a more active uh, work of uh, promotion in the Gulf is one of the pillars of our strategy. In this sense, uh, our government, starting with uh, the vision of President Lopez Obrador and uh, clearly established with uh, this uh, joint effort between the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs confirmed that uh, this is an area that we really want to uh, explore and to uh, potentialize. Despite the 2020 pandemic disruption, we are proud and confident that our uniquely rich and diverse culture, history, natural beauty, traditions, uh, gastronomy, and variety of experiences ratify our place as a dream destination for a tourist coming from the Gulf, particularly. I was invited to talk tonight about the role of the embassy in promoting, in promoting tourism between Mexico and Qatar. And uh, I have to admit that uh, out of the uh, entire portfolio of tools of public diplomacy, tourism is one of my favorites. It's not only one of the most noble, dynamic, effective, immediate and permanent ways of connecting people and to bring nations together. We believe that Mexico, a country of a nearly 2 million square kilometers that comprises a myriad of archeological sites, beaches, colonial cities, and also contemporary cities, uh, sports, nature, uh, deserts, uh, you name it, everything you want and you will find in my country. So we want to make sure that uh, by partnering with uh, Qatar Travel Mart and uh, other stakeholders, we offer to you a most uh, a wide and a complete vision 
of what uh, my country is. Uh, this year was particularly important for all in Doha uh, because we are celebrating 45 years of diplomatic relations between Mexico and Qatar. And uh, as we are approaching five decades of friendly relations between our both countries, we that, uh, are aiming to consolidate uh, our political and economic relations. Let's mention that uh, only last year, our bilateral trade grew in 60%. We are also heavily investing and focusing our attention in promoting multiple, uh, uh, mutual knowledge amongst our peoples and communities. In this spirit, we have been working together with uh, our Qatari and Mexican partners and uh, very often also with our friends at the Qatari Embassy in Mexico in uh, promoting cultural and artistic exchanges that are uh, currently flourishing between our countries and in establishing uh, solid foundations to build upon what we have in common. And in that sense, I want to refer to an important thing that uh, we both share together, Qatari, and Mexican people have a common passion about the sports. And in this sense, we couldn't be better located in terms of um, working uh, right now to start preparing the terrain for what, we will, what, what will be a unique opportunity to have uh, thousands of Mexicans coming to visit Qatar in 2022 as uh, the FIFA World Cup uh, develops. And uh, we already know that a uh, Qatar is very present in the imagination of a uh, Mexican nationals. Likewise, we want Mexico to be closer and to be present for what it is with our Qatari friends. In this fashion, let's not forget that in 2026, Mexico will be hosting for the third time in history, the um, World Cup, the Unity Cup, the uh, FIFA World Cup in, with uh, our neighbors of Canada and the US. So we want to make sure that uh, before we start making plans for a, that a special occasion, we start packing our virtual bags and uh, sit comfortably in order to learn about what Mexico has to offer. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, I congratulate uh, all our partners uh, once again for uh, this wonderful initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for acquainting us with the excellent bilateral relations between Mexico and Qatar. And uh, also, we thank you for your uh, hard work to support the tourism industry, especially collaborating with the QTM team and the QTM 2021, and constantly supporting us with your initiatives and our initiatives. Moving along, let us listen to Mr. Humberto Hernandez Haddad as keynote speech of towards a new model of tourism with sustainability and social responsibility. The virtual floor is yours, Mr. Hernandez Haddad. Thank you, Lara. I appreciate this opportunity to share with you and attendants what Mexico is doing in the tourism industry the industry of hospitality, the travel industry. Let's talk about the Mexican products for tourism. First of all, we have to consider looking at Mexico as a tourism destination leading in the category of sun and beach. Mexican beaches are recognized among the finest in the world. Mexico has more than 6,830 miles of coastlines, the equivalent in terms of kilometers to 14,400 kilometers and more than 450 spectacular unique beaches. But Mexico is more than sun and beach. In 2009, as Mexico was severely hit by the isolated outbreak, of H1N1 and the industry took 32 months to come back, we took advantage of the situation and started to work on new strategies such as diversification of tourism products, smart destinations, which is a key policy change to help mitigate the effects of any crisis. 
our strategy has been for the last 10 years to complement the appeal of our beaches with numerous cultural, natural, and gastronomic attractions. In this way, we have been using culture as a strategic differentiator to attract consumers seeking memorable experiences beyond just sun and beach. For the last few years, we have also been working on inclusive and sustainable tourism development through our program called Mexico Renace Sostenible, Sustainable Mexico Reborn. Sustainable Mexico Reborn has as a main object as a main goal to create a new generation of sustainable tourist routes all around the country. If we look at the figures we have in front of us, the tourism industry is a fundamental pillar of economic activities in Mexico. Could we share, Lara? I'm sharing this, I'm, I'm sharing your presentation. I'm gonna share it again. Right. Can you can you see my screen now? Yes. We have uh, by the year 2019, 22,000 new hotel rooms, new hotel rooms, within a total of 830,000 hotel rooms, along 23,000 hotel establishment. That means. Mexico is seventh, seventh in the world category in terms of hotel establishments. Um, diversity for Mexico in the cultural field is represented by more than 187 archeological sites open to the public. We have 177,000 monuments from 16th to 19th century, around 1,386 museums and a very strategic program of 121 magical towns. In terms of world heritage sites, we have 35 sites, which is number one in Latin America and seventh along the world. In terms of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity, denominations by UNESCO, we have nine. And we are the very cradle of the whole Mech and Mayan civilizations in the Western hemisphere. In matters of uh, golf courses, we have more than 175 world-class golf courses. Uh, we have developed a unique destination for romance and weddings. Mexico is becoming indeed a very, very special place for tourism of romance and weddings. The intangible world heritage by UNESCO has considered the day of the dead one more denomination for Mexico. And the traditional Mexican cuisine has been also denominated by UNESCO in tangible cultural heritage of humanity. What are we doing for promotion? Well, we have a comprehensive integrated response strategy focused on trade and consumer for both national and international markets 100% digital with international campaign motto, postpone, don't cancel, see you soon. And the national campaign, think about Mexico. We have done the first edition of the Tianguis Turistico Digital 2020. September 23rd and 24th, we did it as a preamble to the Tianguis Turistico 2021, which will be celebrated next year in Merida, Yucatan. In matters of promotion, 
we have also gone the second edition of the Tianguis, the Pueblo of Mexico, that will be performed on December 9th and 10th with a virtual format. And the promotion enhancement of road tourism done through the corporation of Green Angels. Green Angels is the Mexican corporation assisting tourists along the roads all around the country. This promotion and enhancement of road tourism, it means a first attention to the tourists uh, driving in the highways of Mexico. We have also developed a permanent of tourism observatory. This permanent tourism observatory is the byproduct of a very close engagement of human resources and experiences, skills between the Mexican Foreign Affairs Ministry and the Mexican Ministry of Tourism. There we have the experience of all our diplomats, Mexican diplomats from the Mexican Foreign Service working together with the Ministry of Tourism to promote the offer of Mexico in matters of tourism to the world. There, I have to underline the remarkable efforts of Ambassador Alfonso Segve Camarena from the Foreign Affairs Ministry and our very dear Ambassador Graciela Gomez, Mexican Ambassador to Qatar. These meetings with the network of embassies and consulates of Mexico around the world are a key tool to promote Mexico in the tourism markets. It is a very, very practical way to present how much the human capital and the natural resources of Mexico consolidate a unique offer in the world of tourism. Well, here we are relaunching the, la the, the digital platforms. And I appreciate, Lara, this opportunity to exchange experiences and to get together to build a better world through the highways of tourism. Thank you so much to all. Thank you a lot, Mr. Hernandez Haddad, for such an engaging topic and for your presentation. Uh, moving along is a presentation by Mr. Luis Araiza about the initiatives and the programs to reintroduce Mexico to the world, challenges and successes. Mr. Araiza, we are ready for your presentation. Thank you, Lara. Hello, and everyone. Thank you as a host, Mr. Araiza, so you can share your presentation from your screen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I thank the ambassador of Mexico in Qatar, Mrs. Graciela Gomez for the invitation. And I want to recognize this great effort of promotion she is doing for our, our main tourist destinations. I extend a greeting to Humberto Hernandez Haddad and Alfonso Segbe. And I also thank my panelist companions who are participating uh, for their presence today. Thank you all for accompanying us. I try to be brief and share with you some strategies that we have instrumented in Mexico and especially in Baja California Sur, the state of the country in which I work as Secretary of Tourism, Economy and Sustainability. I have prepared this presentation to share with you some reflections on the relevance of Mexico in the world and their contribution to the world's tourism industry. I'll try to summarize what we have done as state authorities to face the challenge that COVID-19 has imposed on us. I will also share some Baja California Sur data and how our tourism is recovering. Mexico is one of the richest North American countries in cultural traditions. For more than 3,000 years, many civilizations have been assented in their geography, and today we are up to the ethnic and to the cultural country. Nature has also been generous and allows us to offer all climates, deserts, jungles, mountains, rivers, seas, and beautiful beaches. The history of Mexico and its cultural diversity 
as well as its environment are our main resource. And because of that, we receive every year more than 40 million international tourists that are looking for contact with culture and nature. We have a lot to offer. Pre-Hispanic towns, colonial towns, big sun and beach development, development tourism, luxury, nature, and adventure tourism, sports and congresses and conventions. So we can offer almost all the segments of the touristic market. Facing pandemic challenges, we have intensely worked with the federal and local governments and with the businessmen of the country. We have all committed to something, resources, efforts to protect employees and maintain the businesses, but above all, prepare to offer the best conditions of health, of health safety. Our priority is and will be before everything, human health. We are all convinced that tourism is one of uh, our major health and we are going to continue fight, fighting for it to conserve it. I want to share my experience as Secretary of Baja California Sur. Let's begin with a short video. We are fixed in having as our mission to be the best travel option once health conditions allow it. For two reasons, we prefer to offer the best health conditions to our tourists. And because we have, as you could observe in the video, exceptional beauty and international level of quality in our services. Health, our main challenge and our main objective. We invested in public resources to prepare our businessmen and they, in return, invested time 
and funds to adapt their services to the new reality. We are looking for the highest national and international health certifications. And today, Baja California Sur is one of the states of the country with the least number of COVID-19 cases and deaths in Mexico. Both the states, and the states government and entrepreneurs signed an agreement to perform PCR tests to a vast array of tourist workers, hotels, restaurants, chauffeurs, captains, tourist guides, and more. These, these tests allow us to be certain that the tourists are taken care of by COVID-19 free people and also to protect the businesses employees. Together, government and businessmen are convinced that as more tests are realized, bigger will be the security be for our visitors. I share some that data so that you can see the positive feedback that we are re registering in the last month. These actions have generated trust in our commercial partners, and we have been able to recover progressively our national tourism, as you can see in this graphic. In this graphic reflects the rise of arrivals of visitors. Our strategy can be summarized in these points. Number one, gain travelers' confidence. Two, unify health standards and protocols across destination. Three, provide a consistent and unique experience. Four, target repetitive travelers from markets with non-stop flights, emphasizing luxury and affluent travelers. We strongly believe that the, that the key is and will be the permanent dialogue between government, businesses, and society. We will follow this route and we will search to not only recover our markets, but to also broaden it to places as important as Qatar. We will be delighted to welcome you and we are sure you will be back. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Luis, for that amazing presentation and for the video you shared during your presentation. Uh, before moving to our next presentation, I just want to share you, to share with you uh, greetings of Her Excellency uh, Fatma Rajab, uh, Ambassador of Tanzania in Qatar sharing her greetings for all our valuable speakers. So next is a presentation by our fourth speaker, Mr. Francisco Fernandez Alonso, about gastronomy and cultural diversity, a gift of Mexico to the world in challenging times. Mr. Alonso, please take us to the world of Mexican cuisine. Thank you, I will try. Well, I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Uh, I was in Baja a few weeks ago, so I can assure you it's a wonderful and beautiful place. And let me see if you have my presentation. Yeah, we'll share it with you. Well, good morning and good afternoon. First, I would like to thank Tourism Secretary of Mexico for the opportunity for, to participate in this forum with such esteemed participants. And greetings to all my fellow panelists, to the public which, is, which are watching this panel. For me, it is an honor to speak of Mexico and specifically of our cuisine. The traditional Mexican cuisine is community, memory, and culture. Gastronomy is one of the life's most fulfilling experiences combined with the company of family and friends, mimics human beings and their culture. Gastronomy is in fashion, provoking to not only cook, but to investigate, try, experiment, and combine flavors to offer patron the best of creativity in the smell, taste, texture, and presentation. Every day, tourism of culinary exploration grows, with tourists visiting to experience culinary richness. This favors the country's economies, generating income and employment in the tourist sector, as well as 
benefiting the economy as a whole. Mexico has a great gastronomic tradition with its basic ingredients of maize, chilies, and beans, which has been used for more than 8,000 years. Mexican dishes today are a product of millennial evolution, which has mixed ingredients, resources, technical expertise, customs, rituals, etc., which now make up our great gastronomic culture. I'm sorry, the second slide, please, Lara, I'm sorry, I forgot. The richness of the pre-Hispanic kitchen has fused with the majority of world kitchens enriching the culinary value with the elements with interrelated until achieving this own, own identity. In our country, the cultural value of our kitchen is linked with the nature of diverse aspects, religious, social, economical, cultural and custom, which conform with our intangible heritage. The next slide, Laura, please. We have been privileged by nature as, Mex as Mexico comes with close to 70% of the world's biodiversity of species. We have been access to the Pacific, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean, giving us a rich assortment of seafood. In the 32 states of our Republic, we find a variation of plants and animals, many of which are utilized in local cuisines, providing unique and unmatched flavors. Our traditional cooks are well renowned, having captured their knowledge from, from the family core. They are the owners of the family recipe book which is handed down from generation to generation as a family patr patrimony. These women forge in stoves, give us the opportunity to experience and enjoy the dishes of our ancestors and which without their labor will be impossible to recreate. The next slide, please. No less important, of our culinary art are the denominations of origin of products only present in our country, which are an added value. We have 18 such products with the most well-known being tequila and mezcal. Next, please. With a recognition award by UNESCO in 2010 to traditional Mexican cuisine, as an intangible cultural heritage to humanity, a precedent was set to preserve the customs and tradition linked with the serving the table. Last slide, please. This is a gift from Mexico to the world, which we invite everyone to come and experience and delight in the flavors of our country. In Mexico, like the rest of the world, we have suffered the COVID pandemic. And so we have established a protocol with the world's highest sanitary standards to guarantee to our patrons that we have taken all of, our, of the measures for them to safely experience our great gastronomy. We are waiting for you with open arms. Thank you very much and muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful presentation, Mr. Francisco. And now our full fifth speaker is Mr. Alfonso Zegbe. His topic will be public diplomacy strategies and the synergies with tourism diplomacy to position Mexico's strengths. Mr. Zegbe, we are ready to get acquainted with your diplomatic approach. 
Thank you very much, Lara. Um, uh, Mr. Alfonso, do, do you prefer to share the screen, to share the presentation from your screen? Yes, or if you help me, that's perfect, any of them. Okay, Yala. share it from my side. Okay, thank you very much. So in this case, Hala uh, Qatar, Salam Alaikum, and Salah Hanur. Dear Lara, thank you very much, and Nadine, ambassador for this presentation. And especially, I want to thank uh, Qatar Travel Mart for the invitation that, yeah, for the invitation for this event and the Embassy of Mexico in Qatar, Ambassador Graciela Gomez for their continuous support and commitment to develop this public diplomacy strategy. I'm very honored to share with you some insights with my fellow colleagues of tourism and with Luis um, and Francisco, but, and under Secretary Wasir Hernandez Haddad. What are we doing in terms of uh, public diplomacy and uh, strategies at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Exactly a year ago, the Ministry started developing a strategy and creating a special bureau at the office of the Minister um, Marcelo Ebrard, by the way, who sends you warm regards to dedicate completely for formulating strategies and synergies to contribute to be, build up a modern and effective Mexican public diplomacy. Among the many actions, we believe that by tracing the constant change, especially and moreover during these pandemics that we are creating or we're experiencing new geopolitics and trends emerging from it, it is more than ever necessary to keep on going a smart monitoring of international information for perspective analysis, for perspective analysis, thus to design articulated, evolving and involving cross-cutting initiatives aiming to incorporate a fresher vision to enhance our foreign action onto a more dynamic one uh, including or comprising the challenging and complex environment. What is our main goal then? Is to provide with strategic elements to display a position of a reinforced image of Mexico worldwide by placing our country as a trustful key actor while exercising a full deployment of its capabilities at the time of taking as, as advantages the contest, constant and changing scenarios and global dynamics. Why? Because Mexico has significant strengths. Uh, for example, that the map that Lara uh, very nicely just uh, displayed. And if you take the map, you will see where is the position of Mexico, geographically and strategically, how we are connected with the world. So then um, aiming to help to be considered among the top global actors in wider areas, such as tourism, for example, we are a nation very proud of our values, traditions, extraordinary culture, great human capital, wider natural resources and historical heritage that was mentioned by my predecessors on this um, display of exhibits. We are also more and more foreseeing to place the well-being of people and communities at the center of public action. And all the previous mentioning to be added to our privileged strategic position at the world map. That makes it also very attractive for foreign investment, not just due to that connectivity placement, but also because we have a wide basket of free trade agreements, such as the uh, free trade agreement with the US and Canada, but also with European unions. So then we have, we're connected with free trade agreements with 55 countries in the world. And we also carry a historical prestigious role on the fields of international development cooperation and multilateral action, making us to become a reliable facilitator for the international community. So we, we still have pending tasks and we are working on it to develop a broader national narrative focused on the nation's strengths and objectives for a complete, positive, and wider international action aiming to recover trust affected by structural factors. So we, on the first uh, slide, 
we were able to see what is um, Mexican public diplomacy, understanding it as an additional effort to our foreign policy, an active role performed by our embassies and consulates, by the people that um, is our foreign service, is a permanent body of civil servants with all this experience to manage different fields on the international uh, scene. And by adding this equation uh, with, the, with the public diplomacy, with together all the reference elements, actors, scholars, flavors, sounds, and furthermore, social and cultural founding, we reinforce the Mexican strategy and tasks. So I, I would like if, if the next slide, please, Lara. Due to that connection that we are part with the previous map of North America, Latin America, Central America, we are also connected, if you see it, with Europe, with Africa, and with the Middle East, but also to Asia and the Pacific region. So this strategical connection, it's a must in our case. It's a must to promote our culture that is um, a boast in the world, is one of our main pillars, together with biodiversity, that we're one of the three most mega diverse countries in the world. Uh, our connectivity by air, by sea, by cars that we can circulate. We count today with 77 airports, either domestic or international in Mexico. And until 2019, we had um, a traffic of passengers of around 80 million people in, in that year. So according to this inf to information, Mexico ranks the 14th largest producer of aerospace industry. And it's a very important country in the food supply chain in the world, but also for many materials, even to attend this pandemic situation. According to the World Trade Organization, Mexico has established itself as, as the 10th largest food exporter worldwide. And, um, the, and, and in this um, topic, I want to be very specific. Thank you on this one of tourism and we stay there for the moment, Lara. And this, the role that, that and the importance we provide, that, that one is perfect culture and you will see tourism later. The importance we provide to the halal food where Mexican government recognizes the halal certification, but also the halal tourism a seal certificate to those companies that implement quality standards in serving the Muslim market. A seal that recognizes a differentiated cultural environment, proper handling of halal products, facilities, hospitality, as well as marketing to satisfy the main needs of our clients. Tourism in Mexico, according to the World Trade Organization, uh, to the World Tourism Organization, was until, seven, um, until 2019, the seventh most visited country, uh, making Mexico um, one of the favorite destinations in the world. We are working together with the Ministry of Tourism on this strategy with the private sector and with the network of our embassies worldwide to work on this, to make Mexico one of the top five most visited countries. This pandemic is delivering to us many challenges, but also many opportunities to work on this. And uh, that's why we endeavor this, we started this work together with the Minister of Tourism, with uh, uh, Minister uh, Marcelo Obrard, our Chancellor, and Minister of Tourism, Miguel Torruco Marquez, um, commissioned under Secretary Hernandez Haddad and myself together with our embassies and consulates abroad. And we have been working this with Ambassador Graciela Marquez to promote our country as a top on this. And this is part of those exercises to continue working to place Mexico as a top global destination. Why? This is 
an opportunity after this confinement that we have experiencing to rediscover the world, especially Mexico, with the fulfillment of biosanitary protocols and as a pre precious opportunity to value the nature, archeological, historical and cultural heritage that we have and to rethink our interaction and interrelation with communities and the environment. Thus to detonate a new inclusive agenda in which we all participate. Tourism is fundamental sector for the economy of our country. It's one of the main sectors that promotes economic growth and job creation. And we want to support this region, these regions that we love. It is imperative, and if we, if we can go to, to the next slide, please, Lara. As Under Secretary Hernandez Harad mentioned, the objective of, uh, and, and the next one, please, the objective of the current Mexican government in terms of tourism is to position it as a competitive and avant-garde tourist power, which makes tourism a pillar for fair, balanced, and sustainable development between communities and regions, as well as a tool for social reconciliation. Also, we need to continue working to diversify our markets and the opportunity that you provide us today, it's a great one to do it. So let's keep uh, also organizing together these different activities. This is this display that you may see together with the one that Luis Araiza from Baja California Sur provided, it's just a little sample of what Mexico is. Our public diplomacy and, and uh, the task we're working uh, together with the traditional diplomacy is to display, to deploy all these colors, sounds, tastes, and melodies of Mexico. So if you see these images that we have, you have full universe on each of them. It's history, it's biodiversity, landscapes, nature, trade, connectivity. This is what the story that we're building. This is a story that we want to bring to the world. It is very di difficult to find a place in the world, a country where there is not a Mexican reference. We want to take advantage of these pre-existent conditions, these pre-existent actors, elements, images that people have to continue working on this. Um, if, if we can go to the next one, please. So I, ju I just want to focus a little bit of time just in the catalog of diversity of colors that we have displayed. Very few countries in the world have this potential and these scenarios, these landscapes. I have had the pleasure of visiting Qatar in different occasions. I know how they like to connect with the world. I know all the potentials that people in Qatar has that, that our audience is expecting. And I would like to see, for example, in the questions, if someone gets no impressed by the landscape, by the images, by the colors that we're right now uh, displaying. There is a full range of activities that people from Qatar, with all the biosanitary protocols, with the halal requirements, and with the safety conditions to enjoy Mexico, a country wide, surrounded by the Pacific and Atlantic oceans, very well connected to the world, where you can practice, as Ambassador said, all sports, where you can enjoy from football as expect spectator or in the streets that someone may invite you to play with them, or where you can enjoy the whole season playing golf while looking to the ocean, to the Caribbean Sea, to the Atlantic or to the Pacific enjoying from the palm trees with coconuts to the cactus of the desert. Because as we explained, our biodiversity is so wide that we have every sort of climates and microclimates from tropical to the desertic ones. 
this is why Francisco insisted that our culinary tradition, our Mexican gastronomy and our cooks, they work with one of the widest catalog of elements, edibles, vegetables, and fruits to make the Mexican food one of the most popular in the world. And um, uh, to finish on, 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 on my words about the world that we um, are currently conducting with the Ministry of Tourism and with the private sector directly with permanent uh, exercises with our embassies to position the image of Mexico worldwide. And also with the private sector, with the Council of um, Tourism Diplomacy between the Mexican Ministry for Environment and the Min uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Tourism is to keep like today, these essential dialogues to foster a collaboration among different key stakeholders. It is strategic to identify and highlight the strengths of the country to counteract these negative narratives and perceptions that we all see all over with all this balance of Mexican positives, references and images and actions we are currently conducting, conducting from the side of Mexican government with our president and cabinet and the 32 states actions and also our private sector. That's why we want to transfer to you all these emotions, values and feelings of Mexico, especially within the complex and uncertain current situations in which the actions of governments are facing COVID-19 pandemic it is necessary to analyze the alignment of priorities of different segmented audiences and transmit a comprehensive narrative that positions Mexico as a leading, strong and resilient country that has much to offer to the new global geopolitics, and especially if we want to rediscover the world. So, Ahlan Wasahlan fi Mexique, Shukran Jazilan, Qatar, Shukran Jazilan, Safire Mexique, Shukran Lara Nadine and uh, Wasir and colleagues. Ahlan fi Mexique. Fantastic topic, Mr. Zerbe. Thank you a lot. And we are, as QTM team, we are super glad to host such an amazing webinar to promote uh, uh, Mexico tourism, Mexico di diversity, Mexico beauty to the world, not just to Qatar, but to our worldwide audience. Thank you a lot, Mr. Zerbe. Uh, and now, uh, before uh, addressing our audience questions, uh, we would like to launch the poll again. Uh, uh, to check the result again and to see if there has been any change in the audience. So we we'll run our poll question again. The question is, how excited are you right now about traveling to Mexico? Wow, very excited, 95, 96%, very excited about traveling to Mexico. 97%. So we will share the result. And now uh, I will start addressing uh, our audience uh, questions to our speakers. We have a question to Mr. Alfonso. What is the most challenging part in promoting your tourism uh, diplomacy strategy? Mr. Alfonso, the question is for you. Yes, I believe, and, and thank you very much, Lara. I believe there is a permanent um, developing of a strategy. So that's the most challenging. It's not something static. It's not something that you can just encapsule in, in, in a concept. So what is the most challenging? First, to detect and to make a catalog of where all, all these images and reference of Mexico worldwide. Which ones we can use and how we can 
put them together in a cluster or, or different clusters in order to work in a balance, to work in, a, in such a catalog of colors that if you ask me, but in Mexico, you have this red and I don't like this red. And then I will be able to display all this catalog and tell you which are the red you are referring to because I have hundreds of thousands and I have blue, but also you have this problem in your blue. Yeah, but I also have these hundred blues. So we need to work on this balance about the positive nodes of images that are wider positive and richer than the ones that for different reasons, structural reasons, could affect our permanent tasks abroad on different topics. So that's the most challenging one. To, to put them, to place them all in a catalog, like a catalog of colors when you go to, to buy painting for your house, for your car, or for your permanent activities and fully display them. That's a challenge. And it comes um, in the process of doing it domestically within the ministry, within our government, because it's an action, a task that requires everyone to be there. And everyone means all Mexicans nationwide, but also friends of Mexico an audience like the one we are uh, experiencing uh, at this moment. That's a challenge to put all together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alfonso. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, Under Secretary Mr. Alberto Hernandez Habad needs to leave. He just want to say goodbye to our audience. We just want also to, to thank you, Mr. Alberto Hernandez for joining us for your present, presentation, uh, for your participation. Thank you a lot. Dear Lara, before saying goodbye, let me uh, appreciate again your hospitality. You have played like a great host. And to thank uh, Madame Ambassador Graciela Gomez, Ambassador of Mexico in Qatar, to thanks again, Ambassador Alfonso Segbe Camarena, and to say that the remarkable message produced by Luis Humberto Araiza, the Secretary of Tourism of the state of Baja California, Mexico, and the Chairman of the National Chamber of Restauranteurs, Francisco Fernandez Alonso, play all together the best presentation of how Mexico is awaiting to receive you. Thank you again. Have a great night. Goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Humberto. Thank you and see you soon in Qatar, in Qatar Travel Mart 2021. See you soon. Bye, Lara. Bye. Uh, back to our questions. We have a question to your excellency, Graciela Gomez Garcia. Uh, question, what do you want to accomplish in terms of promoting tourism during your time as ambassador of Qatar? Oh, mute, we cannot see you. Yes, okay, this is a great question. This is a great question. And it, what I want to achieve is to um, build experiences in the place in which nowadays we have um, maybe a stereotypes or uh, maybe some prejudices. So uh, what I would like to achieve is uh, what I always say when um, I refer, for example, to uh, Mexican people asking me about Qatar. Uh, my invitation is uh, come and experience it firsthand. Come and see it by yourself. Uh, Mexico is an amazing country, is, uh, as we have seen now, a, a very rich, diverse, um, is a, a country that has been a favorite a, a tourist destination for uh, decades, so uh, we know how to welcome people. Uh, we want connectivity. If uh, we were to move in uh, the field of uh, traditional diplomacy, we need to make sure that uh, people know each other and that people uh, um, really, really um, have a direct uh, uh, perspective of what uh, my country is, 
same as what I want to achieve by uh, opening the uh, perspective of Mexicans about Qatar. That's my dream. That's my project. Ah. So, <laughs> our question from uh, Her Excellency Fatma Rajab to Your Excellency uh, Ms. Graciela Gomez Garcia. Any direct flight from Doha to Mexico? If yes, how many destinations uh, does Qatar Airlines go? And any Mexican restaurant in Qatar? Not yet. We don't have yet the uh, direct uh, passengers flight. We have been working on it. It is an ongoing conversation and a, a joint effort that uh, has been supported by uh, different stakeholders in Mexico. What we do have now, and uh, is very successful indeed, is a, a direct connection for a trade, a cargo, a, a cargo a route. And uh, we are committed to build into that and uh, inshallah, uh, hopefully have uh, the direct connection soon. So uh, Mexican restaurants, well, uh, we have a few. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say names, but uh, if you uh, call us at the embassy, uh, I will be delighted to share a, a full list. But yes, we do have the experience. We have noticed that uh, in Qatar, there is a, a great curiosity about uh, Mexican food. And nowadays I could count at least um, three, four uh, restaurants dedicated exclusively to Mexican food. So this is a good basis to which, uh, on which we can build. And of course, uh, our dear friends, if um, next year conditions allow, uh, I would be delighted to join and to partner with you so that maybe we can bring together a, a big uh, a festival, gastronomy festival here in Doha. Yes, definitely, definitely. Amazing idea. I have a question to Mr. Francisco Fernandez Alonso from Ms. Perla Luna. How can we promote and advertise gastronomy tourist uh, products routes in order to recover national and eventually international tourism? Well, I think uh, the best we can do is uh, talk about our uh, denominations of our products. I mean, we have a very special products in Mexico, not only, not only the, 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 the chilies and beans and the tequila and tequila and mezcal, there's a lot of an, another products like the bacanora, the sotol. I mean, we have a lot of species to talk about. That's why if we go to any states in Mexico, especially at the south of Mexico, you're gonna find, I mean, maybe hundreds of, of uh, condiments that you can use in your, in your uh, cuisine. So I think that's the best we can do is talk about uh, that we have a lot of condiments that we can use. Uh, we can talk about our color, our flavor, our uh, riches of the presentation. I mean, there's a lot of talk about our cuisine. Thank you, Mr. Francisco. We have a comment from uh, Mr. Guillaume de Baudray. Uh, he's saying that Baja California Sur is really amazing and it's an exceptional destination for wines and local gastronomy, definitely. Uh, another question from uh, Ms. Perla Luna, Mexico. Dear, our Mexico has a lot to offer. How can we contribute to the promotion of Mexico Mexico's tourism in an independent way. And how do you manage cultural differences when promoting Mexico's tourism abroad? Mr. Luis, can, can you answer this question? Or Mr. Alfonso? You have your... Excuse me, Lara, can you repeat the, the question, please? Yeah. 
Ah, Alfonso? Okay. Por, no, Alfonso, Luis, please. it was it was intended for you, so please. And and perhaps I can go later, but Lara he's uh, kindly asking if you could repeat the question, please. How we have we have different questions. How do you manage cultural differences when promoting Mexico's tourism abroad? Okay, I, I think that the best promotion uh, to give outside of Mexico is right now we, because pandemic is uh, try to say that we are a biosecurity uh, uh, country with uh, protocols that we are ready to receive the, the travelers. So uh, more than to say that Mexico is a beautiful place that it is, uh, I think that right now we must to uh, give back confidence uh, and, and to give certain that Mexico is ready to receive uh, visitants. Okay, so we have the questions from Travel Lounge. How is the chances of getting visit visas for Indians? Because we have faced so many difficulties of getting it. Uh, who can answer this question from other uh, valuable speakers? Visit visa for Indians to Mexico. Your Excellency, can you answer this question? Yes, is us for Indians to Mexico. Yes, and uh, actually, I have to say that uh, right now, because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, we are experiencing a complete disruption, as a re and as a result of that. Uh, it is not a, a matter of a, what a specific nationality. It is that, a, generally speaking, this has been a, th there has been some a, disruption and some a, difficulties to a, a, a issue as many visas as we would like. But as always, we are very open. We have very clear procedures, and a, any person who wants to a, apply, they can a, follow. They can. We have a whole network of a, embassies let alone a, a very, very uh, well-established and a very, very uh, large team in uh, India itself, but also in other uh, embassies in which uh, we can, we can uh, serve our uh, Indians, uh, Indian friends who would like to visit. The uh, requirements are there and we would be very happy to help. We are back in business. Basically, after a few months in which we had to slow down the activity of some of our embassies. We are a fully buggy business and trying to catch up. Thank you. I have a question from Ms. Heba Noor. It's an open question for all our speakers. Heba Noor is from Qatar National Tourism Council. Uh, her question is, how tourism industry will reform after COVID-19 pandemic? Our speakers, please feel, feel free to answer this question. So how tourism industry will reform after COVID-19 pandemic? Your Excellency, Mr. Alfonso, Mr. Francisco, Mr. Luis, can you answer this question? I, uh, thank you, Laura. I will just briefly answer that. We have, a, a, and that's why it's very important to monitor trends and what is happening in the world, strategy and public diplomacy because we have to face reality and we have to act according. We cannot change the world and thus all the touristic infrastructure that we already have, big hotels, compounds, but we need to start working and we already started in Mexico to adapt them to the new reality and the biosafety protocols, as Luis Araiza just mentioned. That is a reality, that is a fact. But we have also to incorporate new agendas in order to work with all realities, because it's not just a separate complex, it's also to work with the communities in terms of prosperities and well being, to make them part of this. Why? Because families are involved in this, right? We have to, tourism right now, it's not just. Uh, a separated fact is a cross-cutting one with economic situation and well-being of nations, of full nations that depend on it. 
So we have to relaunch them with a new perspective into a new agenda, more inclusive, adopting all these protocols. And I believe this will affect, and, and if you, I'm a, uh, one of my passions is architecture, for example. And if you follow the new trends of design, they are already incorporating what we were most missing during this pandemic, open spaces, terrace, balconies, gardens, instead of build, big um, block buildings. And that's something Mexico has to offer. The existent infrastructure being adapted to that and those protocols, they want to come. Our restaurants are already taking those measures, open spaces, social distancing. What is very difficult is challenging uh, for, for everyone. No, no one is safe from this. But also what we have to offer in terms of opportunity. All the open spaces that we have, all these magical towns that uh, Vice Minister Hernandez Haddad referred to, these landscapes, natural parks, uh, landscape scenarios, the sea, we will have to incorporate many new elements, mostly from nature and open spaces, and take care of it with sustainability that perhaps we were not providing enough importance before. That's to adapt to this new reality. And, and we already started. I mean, there's, there are actions in Mexico. I've been moving and, and people is moving. Domestic tourism is um, coming back and slowly um, international tourism is as well, because we have to remember that this pandemic situation has not yet finished, that world connectivity has been affected. It, it's, it's keeps being affected, uh, the, the, the air connection among countries. So this is an ongoing situation, but this is something to start with. Thank you. Mr. Alfonso, I have another questions, uh, question for you from Mr. Mario Antoni. Uh, he's asking you please to advise if you have Arabic speaking guides for VIP Qatari families or Arabic, Arabic speaking markets. Thank you, and, and perhaps I will go to a previous question that Luis was, uh, was answering. Yes, Mexico, it's a multicultural country. We have different cultures, and that's very important to take into consideration because we're used to different ethnicities, but also different migrations through Mexican history. About, uh, and, and then we know how to respect different traditions, rituals, religions, and ways of being. That's why I emphasize it in um, halal tourism and the protocols that we can guide with it. You, you can fully enjoy a halal visit to Mexico. That's not a problem. And it's, you won't be compromised and you will be safe and everything. And about that specific question, yes, there it is. There is a Middle Eastern old uh, migration, a Levantine migration, and as uh, Vice Minister Hernandez Haddad told you before, I'm part of that one, my ancestors came from it. So that makes Mexico a multicultural puzzle, but there are recent ones, and also, yes, there is specialized tourist guides and translators in Arabic language in Mexico, in Mexico City and different destinations. And you can even enjoy Mexican Arabic fusion food or specific uh, Arabic or Lebanese or, or Levantine food without any problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, now uh, I have a question from uh, Mr. Diego Martinez. On what websites you can find official information about Baja California Sur? Uh, you can check the website is uh, uh, mm, bcs dot gov dot mx is the website uh, that, where you can find uh, some aspects of Baja California Sur, and we have a, another uh, web page called uh, visit los <clears throat> visit los cabos 
And there's another one, visit Baja California Sur. Great. Okay, uh, Ms. Heba Noor from QNTC, Qatar National Tourism Council, is thank you, thanking us or thanking uh, our speakers uh, so much for your answer. But she has another question. Which strategies you recommend for the hotel industry to overcome the recession during and post COVID-19? Who can help us to answer this question for Ms. Hebanur? Our valuable speakers, Mr. Alfonso, Mr. Louise. Do you want me to share again the question? I, I believe I will just go with the, I'm, I, I believe Ambassador Francisco Fernandez and Luis Araiza have better answers and skills than me for this. But uh, something that is very important is this is a general situation for hospitality industry worldwide. There are not magical recipes. It's very important to be sensitive and receptive for what other countries are doing to share those protocols, to work and see the recommendations of the World Health Organization and the World Tourism Organization uh, in order to uh, reopen tourism uh, facilities worldwide. I think that's important. And also not to resist for this reality, like we are not going to back uh, normality. So we have to incorporate these protocols of cleanliness, sanitation and biosafety on our daily lives, but also in our protocols at hotels. It means investment in most of the cases from the elements on a room, elevators, transportation, and everything and social distance. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge in, in, in those aspects, but we have to take those steps in order to walk to this new reality. Lara, if I say something, please. Yes, yes, please. Yes. Uh, the restaurant industry has been impacted very severe, but uh, I want to tell you, I want to talk to everybody that the most important resources we have is the people. In Mexico, we have almost 5 million people working, collaborating with the restaurant industry. And that's why we are very confident that we are going to go, we're going to pass through this uh, pandemic because the Mexican people are very warm, very kind, very, we have uh, our arms open. And that's the most important thing that we can offer. Definitely. Of course, in Mexico, as I, as I said, like the rest of the world, we have suffered this, this, this COVID. And in the restaurant industry, we, we uh, have a very uh, strict protocol to guarantee the people that we are making the best we can do to guarantee that we're gonna, that we're gonna do the best for everybody. Uh, we have taken all the measures for them to safety experience the great gastronomy of Mexico. Thank you a lot, Mr. Francisco. Thank you a lot to all our speakers. We have yet again concluded our webinar. But now let's hear a few words from our speakers first. Let's start with your excellency, Mr. Graciela. Perfect. Uh, for me, my, my closing remarks had to do with this idea that uh, tourism has always been about feeling good. And uh, nowadays, COVID is presenting us with a challenge to also make sure that people feel safe. Mexico will do that. This is not the first time that the Mexican industry has experienced um, an earthquake, uh, the um, effects of a hurricane, or uh, this is not the first health crisis as it was mentioned before. But in every crisis, 
we have found this as a, an opportunity to innovate, add an opportunity to recreate things. It was said before, our main asset is our people. When you come to Mexico, you will be welcomed with open arms. You will be receiving first class customer service. And uh, I promise you will be uh, tempted to buy all kinds of beautiful uh, traditional handicrafts to bring home and supporting uh, communities at the same time. Please come to Mexico, experience, experience it by yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now let's hear from Mr. Luis. Thanks, Lara. Just uh, on behalf of uh, Baja California Sur government, I want to thank uh, uh, everybody for this opportunity. I hope that uh, uh, you can visit Mexico and Baja California Sur soon. Uh, uh, we, will, we will welcome you uh, with open arms and remember that we are ready for, uh, for investing too. We are a, a, a huge uh, country with a lot of opportunities for everybody. Thanks again and, and see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Luis, and see you soon also in Qatar. And now, Mr. Francisco. Well, Lara, yes, Mexico, it's a magical country. Definitely. We have a magical people. Yes. And we also have the magical food. So we want to share this magical experience with you. So we will be happy to have you in Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot, Mr. Francisco. And now, Mr. Alfonso, what do you like to tell our audience? I will tell, have you felt landlocked, enclosed? So then there is a time to experience colors, flavors, sounds, sceneries, landscapes, sea, sports, everything. So then this is your chance. Come and discover Mexico. Come and discover not just another world, a full universe. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you all our outstanding speakers. Your Excellency Graciela, Mr. Humberto, Mr. Luis, Mr. Francisco, Mr. Alfonso, for your participation and for this wonderful webinar and for transporting us to the fascinating culture and tourism of Mexico. To be honest, I felt as uh, I was in Mexico enjoying its wonders during the whole session. And I'm sure all of our audience agrees. I would also like to extend our gratitude to the office of Her Excellency Graciela Gomez Garcia, including Mr. Paulino and Mr. Carlos for making this webinar possible. We are looking forward to your valued participation in Qatar Travel Mart 2021. Our team and I are certain that the rest of the world is excited about what Mexico has to offer during the show. And to all our participants and audience, we thank you for your continued support and see you next time. Bye-bye.